Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's quick video, we are going to have a look at all of the things that the Flux team has delivered throughout quarter one. If you like the Flux content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of shelling my channel, let's jump into the content. With quarter one being done and dusted, I thought in this video, let's have a look and see what one of my favorite projects, and in this case being Flux, what they set out to achieve in quarter one and have a look and see at what they actually delivered throughout the quarter. Now, as always, it's important to get the disclaimers out of the way. And starting with the first one is this video is not at all sponsored by anybody. The second one is this is just my opinion and my opinion from the perspective of a miner, a node operator, and ultimately a customer of some of the products and services that the Flux team offers, right? And again, the third one being is this is just my opinion and my opinion can be biased. And if you've got a difference of opinion, that is perfectly fine, that is normal. Um, I'd like to hear about your opinion. So please specify in the comments if you don't agree with some of the things or you see it slightly differently. Um, I'm happy to change my opinion and to listen to other people's opinions as well. Now that the disclaimers are out of the way, let's jump into the roadmap. But before I jump into the first item in the roadmap, it's important to know that this is just the roadmap. Real things happen in real life. Obstacles might occur. There might be stuff shuffled around. Um, stuff might be reprioritized. So it's important to take these type of things into account when you evaluate a roadmap and what the team has delivered throughout the roadmap. Now the first item on the list is the Fractus payments. And for those of you that are unaware, a Fractus node really is a cumulus node that is specced out for storage. So the benchmarks and the requirements are slightly different, but the first item on the roadmap is actually to provide payment or extra incentive for people that have been providing um, Fractus nodes. Now, I'm happy to report payments has gone out and these Fractus node operators have received payments. As far as I'm aware, they've received two payments and the only complaint that I've seen or heard of is really the most recent payment sort of took a couple of days before, um, you know, they've been paid. And I suspect the reason for that is, um, you know, all of the checks and balances that needs to be done in order to make sure that the Flux team uh, pays the correct people for the services. As far as I know, this is completely manual, so it's not automated. So it might take a couple of days for them to do the appropriate reconciliation. Now, the next item on the roadmap is Jetpack 3.0 or Flux Cloud. And I've been around, or at least when I launched my app on the Flux network, Jetpack didn't even exist. So it is a welcome change and some of the look and feel and how to deploy your app has become a lot easier. And that's thanks to all of the hard work really that has been put into Jetpack and making it easy for people to deploy apps. Now, is Jetpack 3.0 perfect? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, you know, there's a lot of changes or updates that can be still made to it. Um, I've got a couple up my sleeve, which I wish the guys would, would go ahead and do. And again, my biggest really complaint um, around Jetpack 3.0, it's great, don't get me wrong, um, but some of the improvements that I'd like to see is a, a dark mode, um, as a start, the ability to renew your app throughout the platform, the ability to monitor. Um, so those are some of the basic features that I'm looking to see the Flux team hopefully develop out through the various iterations of Jetpack in the future. And again, that is the key word. This is iterative technology and I'm happy to report the guys are continually making it better. So the fact that they are releasing new features and calling it a new Jetpack, that's always good and I'm happy to see improvement. Now the next item on the roadmap was WordPress and arguably the one that I was probably the most excited for, not necessarily because I'm a big user of WordPress, it's just that will bring adoption on the platform. Now the beta launched and I was part of the beta or at least I stood up a WordPress site. I paid my, I can't remember, six flux or seven flux. I launched the website, I installed some plugins, I made some changes, I tested the performance and you know to be honest I really didn't have too many complaints playing around with WordPress on flux. Granted, I am not a WordPress connoisseur and I don't use a WordPress site necessarily. But the last that I have seen, there was about between 160 to 170 WordPress sites currently hosted on Flux as part of the beta program. Again, the beta program is just that. It's a beta program. It's to get people to use it 
to identify bugs and in order to correct the bugs. Now, I'm not sure how long the beta is going to last for. Generally speaking, it's probably a month or two. So it's yet to be seen as soon as the WordPress iteration goes out of beta. Now, the Flux team, however, has a big goal or what I like to call a BHAG or big, hairy, audacious goal. I think I remember um, asking Dan that question on a live stream and he mentioned that their goal is 20,000 websites. A question for Dan, how many WordPress sites do you think will be on Flux by the end of 2023? Well, My how many are now? Like, have, do you guys do you have a count? Well, now? we're still in beta for the okay. WordPress. We have sites running on Flux, okay. you know, like Mock runs yep. on Flux, Run on Flux, Haven, yep. all sure. those folks. Sure. Our goal by the end of this year is to have 25,000 25, WordPress okay. deployments, okay? Uh, we think that's very reasonable. We've talked to multiple companies that do website development, and they mm -hmm. host, you know, 200 sites, 300 okay. sites. So you can bulk bring them on. Th yeah, because remember, these guys that are hosting websites for all their customers, mm -hmm. they're paying exponential so for them that hosting so for you guys too, the price is the driving factor yeah because then it's like wait you could cut down your overhead and go ahead and do it and they could pass that on to their customers in order to keep the business but yeah if the customers yeah. have been paying for that <laughs> Des yet to be seen if we will see that number but again i will be monitoring it to make sure that or at least to track the progress of the flux team not only for wordpress sites but in terms of the type of marketing that they're going to do to attract people to the platform so i'm quite interested to see how flux compares with the competitor because to be honest um, hosting WordPress websites, it's a competitive business. So it's interesting to see, you know, what competitive advantage the Flux team is going to have compared to some of the other providers that allow you to host, um, you know, WordPress websites on their platform. The next item on the roadmap is FluxOS on a mobile. And to be brutally honest, I'm going to pass this one or not comment on it at all because, you know, I haven't used it at all. So I don't think it's fair for me to comment on that specifically. I'm not a big mobile user or at least I try and stay away because of security concerns on mobile devices but I'm assuming that the team has delivered more feature in the latest version of FluxOS. I know they have pushed out a newer version so at least I know that they have delivered something but around usability is there bugs or is it great that I can't really comment on. Next item on the roadmap, and probably the one that most people was excited for was Parallel Asset number eight, which was Algorand, and the ability to claim and swap your Algorand. And as far as I know, and most people that have claimed that went down very well, without the hitch, you could claim your Flux Algorand and you could swap it. Yes, uh, on the day of release and maybe a couple of days after that, it's generally congested and it sometimes takes a bit of time. But generally, as far as I know, most of people that wanted to claim um, and wanted to swap, they were able to claim and swap their Algorand. So kudos to the Flux team for enabling that and making it such a seamless experience. Now the next item is fiat payments and that's really the ability to pay for Flux services with dollars as opposed to paying with Flux. Now as far as I know, unfortunately that hasn't been delivered in quarter one. Hopefully it gets delivered in quarter two. I'm not exactly sure what the holdup is or what the bottleneck is specifically there, but um, I do think it's an important feature that the Flux team uh, hopefully will deliver soon to enable more people or an easier experience in terms of adopting and paying for services on the Flux network. Next item on the list is the new website and documentation. And I must admit, I quite like the look of the new website. I think it looks really cool. Specifically talking about documentation, I've used some of the new WordPress documentation and it's fantastic. I'd love to see that quality of documentation filter through throughout all of the other documents currently that's available on the Flux ecosystem. Hopefully that's the case. I'm sure that's what the team's intent is. Documentation is really a continuous thing as new features gets added. So I'm hoping to see um, the documentation in general be improved throughout the various other quarters that we're going to have a look at. Now, the next item on the roadmap was XDAO 2.0 proposal to the community. And I'm happy to report that the proposal went out. There was a document. You were able to vote on some of the options in terms of you know who can vote in the XDAO. There was even a section where you could submit proposals. And again, I submitted the proposal. Um, you know, to be honest, I wasn't really too impressed um, about the XDAO 
um, proposal uh, and again that might just be my expectations I was thinking that uh, potentially it's already a product or a more finished product instead of an opinion <laughs> or asking for opinion uh, but again that's just me managing my expectations so um, hopefully in the future we see um, exactly how the XDAO 2.0 is going to shape up and actually allow us to participate in some of the decisions. So hopefully that comes in the future um, and I will manage my expectations accordingly. Now the next item in the roadmap is dynamic pricing and at least in my opinion and again my could be my incorrect opinion it hasn't been delivered by the Flux team. Now I haven't seen documentation stating exactly how it should be working but the way that I have how dynamic pricing should work is not what I see when I pay specifically for my apps. I don't see a difference in the price that I pay um, from one day to the other when I see the flux price go like this. Um, so at least in my opinion until I see any documentation explaining exactly how it works and potentially the pricing structure for the resources which again isn't documented or at least I, I don't know where it is documented that says one gig of RAM costs this um, or something like that costs that. The only place where I have seen it to be honest um, and maybe it's partially working is on the flux drive side where it is it is a set amount per gigabyte in dollars uh, and I suspect that component um, might use a dynamic pricing structure where the price is fixed per gigabyte and depending what the flux price is it dynamically adjusts so maybe in that component it is but for the stuff that I use and what I've seen is the price is fixed for let's say a WordPress deployment it costs 6.83 flux um, there's no dollar price specifically for that so it's not dynamically updated so when flux goes higher you end up paying more for your WordPress site and the same goes for any other application that's not necessarily a dollar based value so um, that's why I don't think it's working for all of the components or at least I haven't seen documentation saying exactly how it should be working for me to really say it has been or hasn't been at least in my opinion I don't think it has been delivered necessarily for all of the components. Now the next item on the list is the Flux referral program and at least in my opinion I haven't seen any documentation stating what this referral program is, what is it going to, how it's going to work. Um, so I don't think it has been delivered as yet. I'm excited for it. Um, I'd love to participate um, in recruiting people to use the Flux network or at least encouraging people to use the Flux network and showing them what the Flux network can offer. Um, but hopefully we see some documentation and some announcement of the referral program in the next short while. Now the last item on the list is prime time and as far as my understanding goes it's really a big marketing push to promote the Flux ecosystem. As far as what I've seen, I don't think it has started necessarily, or maybe it has behind the scenes, um, but at least in the circles that I operate, I haven't really seen any marketing above the normal marketing that I see um, you know on Twitter or um, where I go and look <laughs> and see so maybe it has um, but at least in my opinion I still see the normal or the same type of marketing what I'm used to seeing. Now that was really all of the items that the Flux team put on the roadmap for quarter one however I do know some of the quarter two items was actually delivered in quarter one and to name some of those the numbers in Titan so I do know for a fact that um, you know there has been numbers notes stood up specifically for Titan I track it on my website so I can see that has been delivered so some of these items already have been delivered in Corton 1 uh, another example of that is the carbon footprint so um, on the new Flux website you can go and have a look at the carbon section so I do think that um, carbon is being tracked um, another item in quarter two is the unified branding so I do think there's been significant progress in regards to the branding and making it look the same so kudos to the team doing that um, the other one is the decentralized databases now the official documentation specifically for this item I haven't really seen but I know in order to get um, you know WordPress up and working uh, the Flux team is deploying or making use of some sort of decentralized database um, method in order to get WordPress to, to work so um, I do think that at least some of the components of that is already there um, but 
documentation specifically for us or for normal people like me to make use of that functionality for something that is not WordPress uh, that necessarily I haven't really seen. So hopefully we see some good documentation in how I potentially can implement a decentralized database on the Flux Network. So I'm really excited for, for that type of thing. That's it for this video guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video. If you didn't like the video or you disagree with some of my opinions, please specify in the comments below. I'd like to understand and learn about your opinion. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.